Welcome to the Let's Get Vulnerable podcast. It's your host, Dr. Morgan, and today's episode is going to be short and sweet, but filled with tough love because this is exactly what I needed to hear. And I think that there's so many of you listening that would benefit from this message. Today, we're talking about ownership. We are owning who we are and how we're showing up. I said this in the last episode, I'm going to say it again. We attract who we are being, not what we want. So we have to take full ownership of how we're showing up. I know for me, for a long time, I was dating all these emotionally unavailable people. I had a lot of painful experiences in relationships. I always joke with my clients, like, I need to write another book that's under a pseudonym and just anonymous and just write all my dating stories because there's a lot, okay? But there were people who had whole other girlfriends the whole time I was dating. There was somebody where we dated for like months and then found out he was getting married and was the one day I didn't hear from him. There was people where they cheated on me, where they lied to me, where I had girls DMing me, showing me proof that my boyfriend was out with them and all of this drama and all of these things that at the time I felt were happening to me. I felt like it was happening to me and that I was a victim in the dating scene and that all the good ones are gone and men are trash and blah, 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 right? I had all of these terrible beliefs. And I think the beliefs that I didn't even realize were there were the ones that were really sabotaging me. And it was the beliefs I had about myself, that I wasn't worthy of love, that I would always be abandoned, that I wasn't pretty enough that I wasn't smart enough, blah, blah, for whatever reason, I wasn't going to get the kind of love that I wanted and that all these other people could go get married and have happy, healthy relationships. But that was never going to happen for me because it just wasn't possible for me. I was too broken because of my childhood trauma and all the things I had gone through. Nobody was going to love me because I'm too much. And if they got to know the real me, then they would abandon me because they would know I was too much, right? I could go on and on and on, but I'm giving you some insight into like what was going on below the surface, right? And for the longest time, I was so comfortable just blaming the dating scene and blaming all these men that I dated and going to brunch with my girlfriends and saying, well, can you believe that so-and-so did X, Y, Z? right? And I took zero ownership. And I have to tell you this, when I did my healing, like deep healing work, I would say this was roughly four to five years ago. And it was as I was doing the work I do now, right? I was the whole, the whole journey was unfolding. And as I was doing my deep work, one of the things I committed to doing was completely clearing out my past relationships, which included deleting all the text messages, deleting all the photos. I even went so far as trying to find any paper trails of like past cards or photographs, anything. I was getting rid of all of it. And let me tell you, when I looked at the text exchanges, I started to realize for the first time how toxic I was in my communication, in the ways that I was showing up, I would find these texts where it was like someone saying, hey, I'd love to see you. Let's go get dinner. And they're texting me on like a Tuesday. And then what did I do? I didn't text them for like 10 days. Like like looking at the text thread, it's like, oh, guess I just totally ghosted that person. And then I popped back up. I was doing all these terrible things. And there was even there was even some exchanges where it was somebody saying something like, um, you know, I'm not available for anything serious, but I still want to see you. And then what did your girl say? 
I was like, oh, well, I'm not wanting anything serious either. Knowing damn well I wanted something serious, okay? Like, I just looked at these text messages years ago and it started to hit me how I was a co creator in my toxic relationships. And obviously, I'm not proud of these things, I'm not condoning these things, but I can tell you that having a disorganized attachment style, having these unhelpful beliefs about relationships. I mean, no wonder I was showing up these ways. I even wrote about this um, last week in my email list. There was a time in my life where I was in a love triangle. I was in two relationships at the same time and they both knew about each other. And it started because I was unfaithful. And do you know why I was unfaithful? Because my boyfriend was unfaithful first and I wanted to get back at him. And if you look at the whole scenario, it's like, wow, I was showing up in such a toxic way and I was making all these mistakes. And I know that I hurt people and people hurt me, hurt people, hurt people, right? And it was it was a lot of my own doing. I created a lot of a lot of it because I engaged with it, because I attracted it, because my standards allowed it to happen. My standards allowed it to happen. Right? So I think it's not there's a nuance, right? I'm not sitting here blaming myself, judging myself, criticizing myself because if I did that, I would still be stuck. I would still be repeating all those patterns if I was judgmental towards myself. But I am being compassionate while simultaneously taking ownership and acknowledging that, yes, I played a role in those past toxic relationships. And I think this is a very important topic because so many of us, we can easily forgive our past partners but we can't forgive ourselves. And by taking ownership and acknowledging your role in your past relationships, you're also simultaneously giving yourself the opportunity to forgive yourself and say, wow, I did do those effed up things. I did show up really horribly. And if I'm curious about it, why? Why was I doing that, right? To take ownership means I'm going to acknowledge that, yes, I had a role and that I'm also going to do better. Self-criticism is lazy because you don't decide to do better. You just beat yourself up. You just stay on the ground and you say, you're terrible. You have too much trauma. You're never going to have a healthy relationship right? When you take ownership, you're also taking initiative and you're saying, wow, I see what I did. I'm curious about why I can have compassion and I'm going to take ownership and I'm going to do better. So I'm so passionate about this because I've done the self-criticism. I've beat myself up. I know what it's like to stay stuck and to use alcohol to cope and all kinds of things where I didn't have to really deal with it, right? But I I can tell you this, that when you really look at yourself in the mirror and you look at your patterns and you take ownership, that's when your life changes. That's when your life changes. And remember this, that you're attracting who you are. And if you don't like what you're attracting, there's a reason why, right? Like there's a reason why you're attracting what you are. Even if it's not conscious, even if you're going, I don't know why this keeps happening to me. There's reasons why. And it can be so many things that were not your fault, your childhood trauma, dysregulated nervous system, your attachment style, all these things that happened to you that are not your fault. I'm not blaming you. I'm certainly not judging you. But I'm inviting you to have that lens of even if it wasn't my fault, It's now my opportunity to own it and to decide to do better because that's the only way that I can change. So I think 
The other thing, and this is just kind of a quick side note, is there's also, you know, everything I just talked about, but then thinking about ownership in how you're showing up in your dating life and the stories that you're telling. And I think realizing that so many of you, because the more I talk to you, I'm like, I know that I know this is happening and I know this was me in the past too. So many of you are showing up trying to control your dating life. You're pushing the river. You have a timeline. You have your crazy high expectations. Things need to look a certain way. You want to be able to control, predict, and everything has to be so, so right? So you almost have this perfectionism in how you're relating to your dating life. And I can tell you that that also is another thing that you need to take ownership of and realize when, when you're showing up that way, sure, maybe you're protecting yourself from heartbreak because it's impossible for anybody to meet your perfect standards. So you're not letting anyone in. You have these walls around you, right? And you're, you're protecting yourself, but you're also preventing yourself from meeting your person, from building real, true, authentic, healthy love. So I think ownership shows up in a lot of ways. Ownership about, like I talked about, our, our own ways that were toxic, right? Like, are you the toxic one? Like the way that I was when I didn't think I was for a long time and I was just blaming the dating scene but also ownership about how you're relating to the dating scene and to the people you're meeting. Are you one of those people who has such high, high, crazy, unrealistic standards that there's no one who could meet them? And I'm not saying not to have standards, but you, you know who you are, where it's keeping you safe, but it's also making sure that you're alone, right? And you're trying to control and predict and you want things on your exact timeline and all, all these little things, right? So I think taking ownership as well, how you are relating to the dating process is huge. I hope you like this tough love. We love a little Dr. Morgan tough love and I feel comfortable giving it because I've been in your shoes. It's not like I'm just saying it never having gone through these things, right? Like I know, I know what it's like. And I also know that you're ready to hear the tough love. So I am sending you the biggest hug, a kick in the butt and a hug. And I want you to know that I'm proud of you. If you are taking ownership, if you're looking at your patterns, if you're going, yes, I know I need to change. I'm so proud of you really, truly. And I want to remind you that you can apply to the Empowered, Secure, Loved program. We do have some spots open in August, and we have an incredible offer going on right now where you get some juicy, juicy bonuses because it's my birthday month and I'm giving back. And this is our Soft Girl Secure Summer Sale. And I, I love, I love that idea of, Hey, we want to be soft because soft means it's not weak. Soft means I'm vulnerable. I'm connected to my emotions. I am who I really am. I'm open to receiving love. I don't have the walls up, right? We want to be soft and we want to be securely attached. So this summer, I want you to get a taste of what is that to enter into your soft girl secure era, right? So we have this incredible offer going on. When you apply to the Empowered Secure Love Program in August, all you have to do is go to the show notes. It takes two minutes, fill out the application and you go from there. So if this resonated with you, if the tough love, you go, okay, I hear you, Dr. Morgan. I need to work on myself. I'm taking ownership. Go to the link in the show notes. All right, y'all. I'm sending you so much love. And of course, as always, I am wishing you high self-worth and great relationships. I'll talk to you soon.